வணக்கம் சர்ஜரி ஃபார் சிண்டாக்லி ரிலீஸ் டஸ் நாட் மீன் ஓன்லி த மார்க்கிங்ஸ் அண்ட் த டெக்னிக் இட் மீன்ஸ் மச் மோர் விச் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் ப்ராக்சிமல் அண்ட் கோஸ் டிஸ்டல் ஸோ ஐ ட்ரான் தி எம்பி எம்பி ஜாயின் நவ் தி பிஏபி ஜாயின் நவ் த டோட்டல் செப்பரேஷன் ஆஃப் த டூ ஃபிங்கர்ஸ் கேன் பி டன் ஹவு ஃபார் வி ஷுட் கோ அண்ட் வென் டு ஸ்டாப் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஷால் பி டீலிங் டெஃபினெட்லி வித் த மார்க்கிங்ஸ் அண்ட் த டெக்னிக் பட் வி ஷால் டீல் வித் அ கிரேட் மெனி மோர் திங்ஸ் லைக் how to take the decision what are the principles of congenital syndactyly release and most importantly the follow up that is required and the results we can expect from the surgery we shall deal with this topic of surgical management of congenital syndactyly under the headings of decision making about when the principles and techniques of release of syndactyly pre surgical counseling to be provided the surgical technique per se the follow up and the results we have already discussed the what is to be done decision making in the previous video on congenital syndactyly now we shall discuss the when aspect of this decision making ideally the surgery needs to be done at or about at about 12 months of age if it is done too early the chances of scar contracture are more if it is done too late the effects of asymmetric growth of the differently sized fingers will be very obvious and when the condition is bilateral surgery for both the hands can be done together if the child is less than 12 to 14 months of age as the child is fully dependent on the caretaker but this should be tailored to the patient's needs and when done sequentially a minimum of 3 months gap between stages is ideal before we go further it is very important to understand the basic principles of surgery for congenital syndactyly here we shall see the goals of syndactyly surgery and the goals of creating a good finger web as far as syndactyly release is concerned there are seven basic principles first only one side of a digit is to be released at a single time this is to avoid any vascular compromise or embarrassment of the finger the finger web space being created on release of the two fused fingers should be made from a local flap and this is usually taken from the dorsal side third the sides of the fingers should be closed with zigzag local flaps fourth the resultant bare areas after release of the syndactyly should be covered with full thickness skin grafts five the skeletal abnormalities should be corrected however if it is a complex or complicated syndactyly in which the joint stability or the function may be compromised the surgery should be avoided sixth the finger flaps that have been raised should be defatted before closure making sure to preserve the dorsal venous system and we must use fine absorbable sutures for skin closure now let us see the normal anatomy of the finger web spaces which are so important not only from the functional aspect but also the cosmetic aspect the shape of the normal finger web is in the form of an hour glass the leading edge is in the shape of a v or a u the v shape is usually seen between the middle and ring fingers and between the index and mid fingers and between the ring and little fingers usually the web space is u shaped the finger web has an angulation of about 45 degrees which starts from proximal and goes distal and from dorsal to volar the finger web starts between the knuckles of the metacarpophalangeal joints and ends at the level of the middle of the proximal phalanx shaft and the thin contour of the finger web is formed by the natatory ligament or the superficial transverse metacarpal ligament now let us see the actual techniques of syndactyly release they can be classified into techniques with skin grafting and techniques without skin grafting 
Now, why are there techniques which require a skin graft? Is there a skin deficit? Is the skin that is available not enough? We need to understand a basic principle. In complete simple syndactyly even, the deficit of skin is around 22% and this has been derived after calculating from mathematical formulae. Let us see an example of our own to confirm this. Circumference of the index finger measured in a volunteer 6 cm. Circumference of the middle finger 6 cm. Circumference of both the index and middle fingers kept together 10 cm. The circumference of each finger is 6 cm. That means the total circumference of both the fingers separated is around 12 cm. Whereas when we measured the combined fingers to represent a syndactyly, we found that the total circumference of both the fingers combined was 10 cm. So there was a deficit of 2 cm which approximates around 20%. It was Cronin who first described the use of skin flaps combined with full thickness skin graft for release of syndactyly. One of the main components of this release is the dorsal flap that is used to create the new finger web. This can be of various designs like rectangular, triangular, omega shaped or even multi lobed. The next important technique is the separation of the fused nails. If the nail is wide, excision of the central portion of the nail and primary closure with laterally based triangular flap rotated. If the fused nails are narrower, the buck gramco technique of using lateral digital flaps can be used. The basic pattern of the lateral digital flaps taken from the tip of the fingers to reconstruct the soft tissue on either side of the released nail complex and terminal phalanx bones. The flap B resurfaces one side of the finger and the flap A resurfaces the contiguous surface of the finger which has been released. Some techniques of syndactyly release have been described without using skin grafts. The basic technique was described by Niranjan and De Carpentier in 1990 and it involved using two tricks. First is extensive defatting and the second is use of excessive tissues from the dorsum and at the same time leaving less than 2 mm raw areas open to heal by secondary intention. These techniques are ideal for release of simple syndactylies that do not extend beyond the PIP joint. Techniques like the VM plasty, the dancing girl flap, the improved bell bottom flap and the trilobe flap have been described in this regard. Having planned the surgery, we need to do a regular pre-surgical counselling of the caregiver and explain the complete procedure and all the details. We need to explain about the anesthesia that's going to be given for the surgery which is usually a general anesthesia unless if it is going to be done in adults when a regional block can be given. We have to explain the need for a skin graft and the problems that can be associated with these skin grafts like hyperpigmentation or hair growth. We must explain that a plaster of Paris slab will be applied after the surgery and this will be extending up to above the elbow. We need to explain how this will help the patient because it will help in hand elevation and at the same time it will prevent the dressings from slipping out. We also need to explain that this POP would be on for about 2 weeks. The caregivers may also need to understand that we will be doing the dressing change under anesthesia. This is to ensure that the procedure would be painless and a gentle technique would ensure that there is no loss of the skin graft. We also need to inform them about the scars that may form on the fingers and on the donor site and the need for their role in the management of these scars. We also need to explain the necessity for staged surgery to protect the viability of the fingers and the minimum period of 3 months between any two stages. In this example, 
the index mid ring and little fingers were involved. The index and mid syndactyly and the ring and little syndactyly were released in the first stage and in the second stage the syndactyly between the middle and ring fingers was released. And finally the polydactyly on the terminal phalanx of the index finger was excised. It must also be emphasized that corrective surgery may be required as the child grows and the growth of this card skin may not keep up with the growth of the bones. Coming to the surgical technique, we shall go through the different steps in the order that they are done. First is the anesthesia, we have already spoken about this. A comfortable anesthesia is very important to a good surgery. Now we shall see the markings for the syndactyly release on the left hand of this child for syndactyly release between the ring and little fingers. The first point is the MCP joint of the fingers. So just draw the point on the MCP joint. Okay. Then the next is you have to draw the axis. This is the mid dorsal axis. Keep palpating where the bone is and draw the mid dorsal axis. Now if you note there is already a scar over there because of the release between the mid and ring fingers. Yes sir. So now I am drawing the mid dorsal axis and on this finger I have to draw the mid dorsal axis. Yes sir. Right now, now similarly I have to draw, I will go to the volar side then I will show. Now you note that there is a syndactyly between the two, I am sorry the two nails are uh, fused. Yes. There is only a groove. So this is the complex syndactyly. Now I told you here. Now you point, draw the PAP joint. So I have drawn the MP, MP joint, now MP the PAP joint. joint. Now draw two thirds of the distance here, two thirds of the distance here. Yes, and now I don't have to go exactly this much. So this will be the dorsal flap. This okay. flap. Now this is the longer finger, the shorter finger. Yes, so from the longer finger you go to the PAP joint of the shorter, shorter finger. finger. From here go to the middle of the MPX of the longer finger, yes, then again come to the DAP joint of the shorter sir. finger, then go to the midline and go between the nails. Okay, okay. Now you note here that the first small flap is on that side. It's yes, sir. Looking that uh, way. Yes, sir. The second big flap is pointing towards us. Yes, sir. Remember this when you go that side. Okay. okay now we'll turn the finger over. And here, where are we going to have your now again here I'm going to draw the mid volar line. Yes. Sir. Okay. This is the mid volar. Remember this mid volar and mid dorsal because your dissection should not, the flaps should not cross, cross this the mid volar and mid dorsal. This will be a little deviated because there is a deviation of the finger. Now I am going to have a, now this, this is where the web comes. Yes sir. So I am going to have my web over here. Now which finger do I want the web for? I want it for the ring, ring finger, finger which is more important. Yes sir. So I will have a web like this. Okay, so this flap will go inside. Inside. And this side I'll have to skin graft. Now remember the first flap was pointing towards uh, opposite, the opposite side. side. That is the that large same finger. Thing. Yes, sir. Then the big flap was pointing towards me. Yes. Sir. That's what is there now. Then I come over here and that's all. Now so now we have got one small flap pointing that side, which is exactly yes, how it was there. Yes, sir. Okay. Next is it is pointing towards me, the big flap. Yes, sir. Now the question comes in the tip of the two fingers yes, because sir. There is bone going to be exposed when I cut between the bones, when yes, I cut sir. away. If I make an incision like this, both sides will have bone exposed. Yes, sir. So what I am going to do is, I am going to make a flap over here, that is over the ring finger, this will continue like this, this flap. Similarly, over this finger, it will continue like this yes, and then it will join this point. Okay. Now you can see this, it is like an S, comes yes, over this. So this flap will go and cover the little finger. This flap will go and cover the ring finger. Ring finger. Yes, so sir. that is all. This is called the bug gramco method. Okay. Yes, then these flaps will go and do the what they are supposed to do. So remember, this <coughs> should be an exact yeah. image of Softly. this. Yes. Okay. This is how it will come. So now this flap, this is very you cannot make it more proximal, it will look very deformed because it will become like a cleft hand. Okay, if you take sir. it you must make it at the same level. Remember it must come in a cascade like this. Okay, sir. A natural curve. So that is why I have marked it over here. Yes, sir. This is enough. This flap will go on the ring finger. Yes, so this flap when you raise it, this edge will get sutured over here. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Once the markings are made, the tunique can be raised. The pressure to be set up in this pneumatic tunique should be about 100 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure recorded in the child. The dorsal skin flap is first raised as marked. 
the incision is made down through the skin and subcutaneous tissue and when the flap is being raised we must make sure that the veins are seen on the under surface of the flap and the flap is raised right up to the base that has been marked. The zigzag incisions marked on the dorsal side are now made. The incisions go down through the skin and subcutaneous tissues and the flaps when being raised we need to be careful as we have already marked to not cross the dorsal mid axis line. This is to ensure a good vascular supply of these flaps. The volar incisions are now made as already marked. This consists of a rectangular flap based on the ring finger which is going to resurface that side of the ring finger and the distal zigzag incisions made up to the terminal phalangeal region. The incisions are made down through the skin and subcutaneous tissues. We then raise the flaps that have been marked. While raising the flaps on the volar side, it is important to carefully look for the neurovascular bundle. There may be a shared neurovascular bundle between the ring and little fingers as in this patient. When there is a shared neurovascular bundle, it is important to decide on which side the neurovascular bundle must be given. Here it must be given to the little finger as that side is the contact area of the finger whereas the contiguous side of the ring finger is the non-contact area. Now we have reached the tips of the fused fingers where the nails are fused and the terminal phalanges are also fused. So first we need to raise the lateral digital flaps that we have already described earlier and the two flaps A and B flaps need to be raised. These are also raised in the subcutaneous tissue and preserved. Then turning the finger over we need to split the nail. We need to split the nail complex using a number 15 blade. After this is done, the fused terminal phalanges must be separated by using a bone cutter sometimes. Now the total separation of the two fingers can be done by going through the facial attachments between the two fingers. We have already ensured that the neurovascular bundles have been given to one side here to the little finger and we need to remember that there is always a thickening of the fascia between the two fingers. So the separation of the fingers is done from distal to proximal. As we continue the separation of the fingers proximally, we need to know two things. How far we should go and when to stop. The important thing to remember here is we need to stop only after dividing the natatory ligament that is the superficial transverse metacarpal ligament. Once this is divided we will encounter the digital vessels that is the bifurcation of the common digital vessels into the proper digital vessels and these should not be harmed. Now that the release has been done we need to defat all the flaps that have been raised. And it is important to remember that we must avoid injuring the subdermal venous plexus to avoid any vascular embarrassment to these flaps. Next, the tunicae can be released and hemostasis secured. Now the suturing of the flaps is done with fine monocryl sutures. We use 4-0 monocryl. Now the residual raw areas need to be resurfaced with full thickness skin grafts. We commonly tend to take the full thickness graft from the groin area. But this should be avoided because it leads to hyperpigmentation later on and sometimes very embarrassing hair growth when secondary sexual characters develop. The alternative donor sites for the full thickness graft can be from the medial arm, from the volar aspect of the wrist, the cubital crease, 
and the lateral part of the inguinal area closer to the anterior superior iliac spine. The anchoring of the full thickness grafts is also done using 4-0 monocryl. The donor sites of the grafts are also closed carefully in layers. Sometimes it may be cumbersome to do a neat dressing between the released fingers. I follow a simple method. First is we take a strip of non-adherent dressing which could be a paraffin gauze like this on which I apply a gauze soaked with betaine and squeezed and finally I apply a dry gauze. This is folded over itself and this folded piece of dressing is inserted between the released fingers. This ensures a good non-adherent dressing over the graft and the suture lines. Then a complete dressing is applied. The follow up for these patients after congenital syndactyl release involve the application of an above elbow POP slab with the elbow in 90 degrees flexion, forearm in mid prone position, wrist neutral, metacarpophalangeal joints flexed and interphalangeal joints straight. No splints need to be applied on the fingers. An examination on the table under anesthesia is done at 7 days and the crusts are cleaned. The second dressing needs to be done at 2 weeks. This can be done under anesthesia or in the dressing theatre and after that it is left open. Advice regarding wash and coconut oil massage is given following which a regular review is advised. We can get good results after surgery for congenital syndactyly release but complications can also occur especially if the basic principles are not followed. These are the results of the surgery done for the child with the congenital syndactyly involving the middle, ring and little fingers. In the first stage, the syndactyly between the middle and ring fingers was released on both hands simultaneously and in the second stage, the ring and little finger syndactyly was released again on both hands simultaneously. The results of the same syndactyly release as viewed from the volar side. However, complications are also known to occur. These complications can be divided into intraoperative complications and postoperative complications. These postoperative complications may occur in the early period, otherwise known as short term complications, or later on and are known as long term complications. The intraoperative complications that can occur are mainly injury to the nerve or the digital vessel which may cause a vascular insufficiency or tight closure which may cause a venous insufficiency in the skin flaps leading to skin necrosis. The short term postoperative complications include infection, flap maceration, graft failure or loss of postoperative bandages that may sometimes occur in children if the dressings have not been applied correctly. The long term postoperative complications include web creep which is distal migration of the reconstructed finger web commissure, scar hypertrophy or contractures. Of these web creep is a very common complication. It usually occurs if surgery has been done before 80 months of age of the child, if it has been a complex syndactyly, if split skin grafting has been used instead of full thickness grafts, if healing has been by secondary intention especially when there is a commissural flap dehiscence and finally if the natatory ligament has not been divided. There are different grades of this web creep. If it is at the normal level in reference to the other web commissures, it is called as grade 0. If it is present at the normal position but only thickened, it is grade 1. If it is one third of the distance between the metacarpophalangeal joint crease and the proximal interphalangeal joint crease, it is grade 2. If it is two third of the distance, it is grade 3. And if the web reaches the level of the proximal interphalangeal joint, it is called grade 4. The next important long term complication is scar hypertrophy that can be seen in this example. It is important to follow up all the surgery with scar massage, compression therapy and silicone gel massage. And finally, skin contractures which are 
also a common complication which could be mostly because of improperly placed incisions, the use of split thickness skin graft instead of full thickness grafts, graft loss, flap necrosis resulting in healing by secondary intention and poor follow up. Most of these complications that we have seen can be avoided by following the principles of congenital syndactyly release surgery. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about congenital syndactyly, the clinical presentation, the different syndromes and the other basics. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery. Manakkam.